Wait, here you are again? Awesome, that means that you want to pass this test like a pro. So welcome and let's get started to the last part, part three. Which two-dimensional figure is always a regular quadrilateral? Two-dimensional is nothing but 2D. 3D shapes are like cubes and things like that. When they say regular quadrilateral, they're pretty much talking about the equal side and the equal angles. A square is the only one that specifically satisfies the rule of being a regular quadrilateral. So just from this definition alone, the answer we already know is going to be square. But I do want to mention the irregular quadrilateral because it's the opposite. It's the unequal side and unequal angles. The reason it's important to know this is because in case they do decide to switch the question around and make it irregular. So now you know regular, irregular. All that is done. Boom. I want to go over quadrilaterals and quadrilaterals are nothing but these kind of shapes. So we have rectangles, we have squares, we have rhombuses, we have tapo oh, tapezoids. <laughs> trapezoids these are just some ideas and a polygon from one of the answer choices I wanted to put it up here as well but it's also a 2d shape closed which means that it's nothing like something like this that's not that can be a, the polygon and then it has straight sides okay so it can be an oval or anything like that that's it Janelle makes fruit punch by mixing the ingredients listed below Five pints of orange juice, six cups of grape juice, eight cups of apple juice. How many quarts of fruit punch does Janelle make? We have definitely two different types of units of measurements. So that is already telling me that I have to go back to our reference sheet. One pint equals two cups and one quart equals two pints. That's the first step. The second step, we will do a plastic that would be 14 cups. Which equation will we use? Well, this one has the cups. So we would have 14 cups here equals, we don't know how many pints. You can do this by cross multiplying by doing one pint over X, because that's the X is the unknown number, equals two over 14, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna multiply this way so 14 equals 2 times x which is like that we're going to divide by 2 divide by 2 now you are going to get x equals 7 because 14 divided by 2 is 7 so that means that we have 7 pints so I'll put that here so we can put that here 7 pints okay now we have seven pints up here, right? We could do seven plus five pints equals what? Well, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's twelve. And we're going to make sure we label it pints. Now we're going to use this one. So we're going to put twelve pints equals how many quarts? Well, we're going to use the same concept as this. We're going to do 1 over x equals 2 over 12, which gives us, well, we do that little multiplication thing there. We do 1 times 12 is 12 equals 2 times x, which is the same as 2x. We divide both because remember to do the opposite or the inverse operation that cancels it out. And x equals, well, 12 divided by 2 is Six. So the answer would be six quarts. A student completes his homework in one hour and 34 minutes. How long in minutes does it take the student to complete his homework? I hope you did not put the reference sheet too far away. Here it is again. This one, we have hours and minutes. So we have to know that one hour equals 60 minutes. So we already know that this is 34 minutes because our answer needs to be in minutes. And we know one hour is 60 minutes. So the only thing we have to do is do 60 minutes because we're converting one hour to 60 minutes plus the 34 minutes. 
And we get, well, 4 plus 0 is 4, 6 plus 3 is 9, so that gives us 94 minutes. That's it. Which statement about the quotient of 425.378 divided by 10 to the third is true? We have three things going on here. We have exponent, which is the 10 to the third, which I'll explain in a minute. Decimal, which we talked about earlier, and then we have division. An exponent, if you didn't already know, it means that that number is multiplied by itself this amount of times. So if it's 10 to the third, that means it's 10 times. 10 times 10, which if we multiplied all that out and did all the math, we would know that it'll be 1,000. These are some golden rules when it comes to multiplying and dividing by exponents. When we're dividing, we move the decimal to the left, 425.378. Then we move it to the left. So we have to move it one, two, three spaces. And then we're going to get the zero, right? We put a zero there, 0 0.425378. Now, when we're talking about multiplying, so we have to move it to the right. We're going to take that same number, 425.378. We're going to move it three places to the right. This is the amount of spaces you move, whether to the left, to the right. So if it helps you to the left, to the left, all of that good, those songs, trust me, it'll help you. <laughs> so we have one, two, three, right? And now this number becomes 425,378. It says a decimal point is located to the left of the four. Well, let's see, we were dividing, right? by 10 to the third and when we do that right we have we divided it's to the left of the four that looks like that's the answer off the bat we got the right answer <laughs> which two-dimensional figure always has four equal sides and four right angles we already went over this a few problems ago and just a reminder it could only be a square so it's another way of asking the same question come on man that's too easy what is 680 and 14 thousandths written in standard form? Here we have the trusted place value chart. This is specifically for standard form. And when we hear standard form, we have to understand that that's how the number is written. Number form. That's how I like to think about it. Once I read 680, like here, you would put the 6 in the hundreds place, the 8 in the tens place, the 0 in the ones place, we have the decimal place here, and then we have 14 thousandths. So some people would write that there, not knowing that thousand is over here. So that means that we would have to do the zero here, because there's no tenths place, the one in the hundredths, and the four in the thousand. Kaylee works at a pet store. Part of her job is to add correct amount of water conditioner to each fish tank. The list below provides information about the number of fish tanks and the amount of water conditioner she uses. There are 12 fish tanks that need conditioner. Each fish tank is filled with 20 quarts of water. For every 10 gallons of water, Kaylee uses one teaspoon of water conditioner. What is the total number of teaspoons of water conditioner Kaylee used for the, all the water in the 12 fish tanks? One, two, three, four, 12 fish tanks. That's what we talked about, right? Now, each fish tank has 20 quarts. The problem here is that not only do we hear quarts, but we hear teaspoons, we hear all kinds of units of measurement. So what do we have to do? You guessed it, you need a reference sheet. All right, so here we did 20 over x equals four over one. Reason being is that the 20 to four, it has to do with the quarts and the x and the one are the gallons. So we wanna put like things together. So when we cross multiply, that would be 20 times 1 equals 4 times x, which is 4x divided by 4. That would give us 20 divided by 4, which is 5. So that means each of these is 5 gallons. So we have 5 gallons, and there's 12, so we can do 12 times 5, right? So 5 times 2 is 10, and 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. So we're not done yet. This is just telling us that this is 
60 gallons. The next part it says for every 10 gallons, she uses one teaspoon for the conditioner. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the operation we're going to have to do is division. So we're going to have to divide 60 by 10, right? And then what does that give us? Well, 10 divided, uh, 60 divided by 10 would be 6. And that means that she would use 6 teaspoons to condition all the fish tanks. And the number 714.438 or 714 and... 438,000. How does the value of the digit 4 in the left of the decimal point compare to the value of the digit 4 to the right of the decimal point? Just do the place value chart. So this is our number, or even if we write it there. But we have to put everything in the right order, right? So we have 714, then we have our decimal point, 438,000. When we do that, now let's read the question again. It's asking what is the value of the 4 to the left of the decimal, right? This is the one we're talking about. And the value of the digit 4 to the right of the decimal. So they want us to compare these two. Now, what I always do is I always remember it as 1, and then 1 tenth is the same thing as 1 over 10. This one is an open-ended question, so you have to write it out. I can't write that out for you, but that's the information. From there, you write it in your own words. Colin built four identical towers using unit cubes. One of the towers is pictured below. Don't make fun of this, okay? So we have this tower. Now it's saying that he did four of these. One of the few things that I want to keep in mind is that number one, it says this is one cubic unit. That's very important because at any given time, they could change that to two cubic units and then that changes the answer completely. The second part is what is the total value in cubic units of the four towers Colin built? Volume stands for length times width times height. And I will just shorthand it by putting LWH. This is my favorite thing, and in case you didn't know, I actually have a video about this in my last year's series. So we have this one, which is two, right? Because we're counting two, we count two, and then one, two, three, four, five. So we have five. Now we did the total volume for one shape. Let's see, it would be two times two times five. So we have four times five equals 20. That would be that volume for this shape but guess what we have four of them so would we want to do this four times or would we want to multiply by four well I would multiply by four so 20 times four four times zero is zero four times two is eight so that would give you 80 cubic units <laughs> A diagram of two rectangular prisms is shown below. Explain the process for determining the combined volume of the two prisms. Be sure to include the total volume in your answer. So if you know anything about total volume, when it comes to shapes like this, you would have to separate the two and you could break it up by saying shape A and shape B. So you would have to find the volume, which is length times width times height, with this shape plus this then find the volume of this shape so in this case let's say we have 5 times 3 is 15 times 2 would be 30 right and now be cubed then the bottom shape would be 4 times 3 times 5 so that'll be 12 times 5 12 times 5 is 10 that's 6 that's 60 right so we already know that we have 30 and 60 inches the last step of finding the total value would be 30 plus 60 and that is my friend the total value if you want a more in-depth video about how to do total volume all about rectangular prisms feel free to check out my other videos from last year 
So you would have to explain this in your own words for that part of the problem. The second part of it. If the prism on top of the figure 4 was 4 instead of 3 inches tall, what would the difference between the volume of the original on top and the new prism on top B. So you have to show your work. So it wants to know this one on the top. We already know what it is originally because this is the original. And now they want to know what it would be like with four inches instead of three. So we do five times four times two. Well, five times four is 20 times two gives us 40. And now we have to do Guess what? It said the difference, so that means we have to subtract. Now we have to do the 40 minus the 30 that we got from over there, and that would be 10 inches cute. That's a wrap. Part 3 done for this whole series. I hope this helped. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out. Leave any extra suggestions down below. I will be reading them to see if there's any other math prep that I could help with for any other test. Take care, and I hope to hear that you passed. Pass like a pro. Take care. Bye. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side.